We shall now begin our Lectio Divina for this second Sunday in Ordinary Time, taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and he stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of those two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At this moment of our Lecture Divina, you are given the chance to read the Gospel again. And try to look for phrases or words in the gospel that have touched your heart and mind. So I invite you to read the gospel silently and prayerfully. On this Sunday, every year, there is an extract from St. John's Gospel, taken from the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus, which serves as a preliminary to the continuous reading which will begin on the following Sunday. In this passage, we have St. John's account of the calling of the first disciples. It differs markedly from the account given in the Synoptic Gospels and has its own richness and depth. The passage is in three sections. 
verses 35 and 36. The testimony of John the Baptist. Admire the marvelous humility of the precursor. Model for all those involved in giving guidance to others. You might also like to spend some time reflecting on the famous title of Jesus, which is the Lamb of God. In verses 38 and 39, this is the encounter between the disciples and Jesus, wherein it is shown as a simple and down-to-earth, but it's, it is also very deep. Let it remind you of meetings that have affected you, that have affected you or the people you know. In verses 40 to 42, to understand the power of the story, you must be aware of the significance of the names in the Bible. A person's name indicates the nature of the person, who the person is deep down. In giving Peter a new name, therefore, Jesus invites him to rise to new possibilities. And it is important that Jesus had to look hard at him before he could discover what this name, this new name, should be. Please close your eyes, and as you follow me in the prayer, let it imbibe in your heart and be marked in your mind about our gospel reading that we have heard. Lord, we thank you for people who guided us. But in a try to possess us, heavens, teachers, spiritual guides, friends. For a time we stood with them. Very simply, like John the Baptist, they said to us, Look, there is, there is one you should follow. And hearing this, Lord, there are many people who want to do great things for you. Excel in my deeds that will win them glory. But from time to time, someone comes into our lives and just by looking at them, we can say, Look, there is a lamb. Someone who is willing to do humble things, patient, That is Jesus. That's what Edward Shevard Nad said. It is time for us to realize that neither socialism nor good neighborism or respect can be produced by bayonets or blood. Lord, we also pray for our leaders. So often they think they can win our allegiance with threats or great promises and propaganda. Sometimes even church leaders think like that. Teach them that to win people's trust is a deep process. They cannot force it on us. We must start following them ourselves. Only then should they ask, what do you want? They will always find that what we want to know 
is how they are in the truth and honesty of their homes. They must come straight with us, invite us to come and see, and then be willing to have us stay with them. Only after that, we will be able to say, Yes, we have found our leader. As Jean Vanier said, Often I go off in dreams about living and being with the poor. But what the poor need, however, is not my dreams, but my concrete presence. Lord, we are like Jesus only when we turn to those following us and invite them to come and see where we live and then let them stay with us the rest of the day. Lord, forgive us for allowing all transactions to become occasions for making money. Even such deeply human encounters as healing a sick person, counseling those in distress, or protecting the rights of the oppressed. These meetings should be like what happens between Jesus and his first disciples, human beings going to visit the leader, spending a day with him, then saying to their friends, We have found someone who can save. Lord, like many other societies around the world, we have a tendency to categorize people. <clears throat> we characterize whole groups as lazy, or incompetent, dishonest, because they belong to a particular ethnic group because they attend a certain kind of school or because they live in a particular part of the city. Send us people like Jesus who will look deeply at others, dispelling all prejudices and will say to them, Society has called you by one name. From now on, you shall be known as free and creative people. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us all to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.